Hello, calculus kids. This is Mr. Bean, and in today's lesson, we are going to focus in on some rates of change that are not acceleration, velocity, position, that type of stuff. So we're moving on to some things that actually we've kind of already done this, but I just want to clarify a couple little things, and then you'll get right to work. So to know if something is increasing or decreasing. Now these are very key words you're going to see over and over again. To know if something is increasing or decreasing, all we do is check the sign of the derivative. If we know the sign of the derivative, then we know if it's increasing or decreasing. Now, the key word here is it's. What in the world is it's? It's just whatever the something is. So for example, is height increasing? Well, if I want to know if height is increasing, then I check height's derivative. And if height's derivative is positive, then it's increasing. Okay, so velocity. Is velocity decreasing? That happens if velocity's derivative is less than zero, or in other words, acceleration is less than zero. What about Mr. Bruss IQ? Mr. Bruss IQ is increasing only in his dreams. So if he's dreaming or if the derivative of Bruss IQ is positive. Okay, so we just take whatever we're talking about for increasing, decreasing, we just say positive or negative. So that's why I did a smiley face here just to say, well, what the heck's a smiley face? It could be anything. If you're saying something is decreasing, that only happens if that something's derivative is less than zero. Okay, incredibly important points to ingrain in your mind. It's pretty simple, but you have to understand whatever that thing is, you just take its derivative, figure out if it's positive or negative. Then you know if it's increasing, decreasing. In this lesson, you're going to be doing a lot of the derivatives on your own. I would encourage you to use a calculator. You don't have to do this by hand for this lesson. So uh, I just wanted to remind you real quick, how in the world do you do the derivative on a calculator? Well, it's like this. You remember the math eight thing? So on a TI-84, it's math eight. If you don't have a TI-84, then you have to uh, just make sure you understand how to do it on your own calculator. Math eight gives us the derivative of, what do we wanna do? We're gonna say respect to X. And then here's where we type in the function. So I'll say, type in that function real quick. And then because I typed a sine, cosine, or tangent button, I just like to always make sure is my mode, where's my mode? Is my mode in radians? Yes, it is, so I'm good there. And then I say at what point? At x equals, I said a three here. So at x equals three. So that is the derivative at a point. So if I was describing, if I was trying to figure out if this was increasing or decreasing, then I know that since this is negative 1.99, that it would be decreasing. And also that the rate of change, so it is approximately, the rate of change would be just about two. So negative 1.999, or since you, if you rounded this up on that third decimal, it could have been also a negative two. Either way, truncated or rounded. One thing that is confusing for kids is understanding when a function is already a rate of change and when it is not, because that really affects the derivative quite a bit. So here, this first bullet point. If f of x just represents the bunny population after x amount of years, what is f prime of x? Okay, that's something that we've been doing. So it is just the rate of change of the bunny population per year. Okay, basic definition of a derivative. I probably should say here the rate of change of the bunny population per year at x years, like at that very specific year. That's what f prime of x is. Now the next bullet point shows that f of x is already a rate of change. See here that word rate f of x is the rate of change at which a bunny population increases. So it's kind of like this is already this f prime. Uh, and so then it's saying, uh, what would f prime of x represent? So f prime in this case is the rate of change of the rate of the bunny population per year per year, <laughs> okay? So this is where you would have per year squared uh, if you were trying to do our units because you're doing a derivative of a rate or in other words, a rate of change of a rate. And that's where that, uh, if you think about acceleration, that's usually the easiest thing. Acceleration would be like that meters per second squared, that type of thing. Okay, so just be careful when you're reading the problems. Recognize if it is if the function that they give you is already a rate or if it is not, and the derivative would give you the rate. Last part of our lesson, we're talking about rate of change from a table, which we have done before, but there's just a little twist to some things I wanna show you. So here we have a table of showing years and of people. So this is probably like a population, maybe how many people after so many years, uh, which means this is really small because it's only 100, 120. So uh, let's do P prime of 15. Let's estimate it. Well, 15 years is right in between the 10 and the 20. So let's just do the 20th year minus the 10th year. And then that'll give us the rate of change or an estimate of that rate of change of 15. So that's, the, let's see here. P of 20 is 150 minus 120 all over 20 minus 10 is 10. So I get 30 divided by 10. That is three people, people per
per year. So that's our average rate of change for the 15th year using the table to estimate. Okay, we've done that before. But now we see the P prime of 20. Well, 20 is right here, it's on the table. So what in the world, what, what numbers do we use? There's actually three options you could do. We could put 20 right in the middle. So let's say P of 30 minus P of 10. And if we do that, that'll put give us an estimate. So 30 minus 10, that would give us an estimate of the rate of change of 20 by taking the numbers that are surrounding it. Okay, so that's actually just like what we did with 15. Another way is take this 20 and do the do numbers that are close to it. So do like 20 and 10, which we already did. That was our other problem. So P of 20 minus P of 10 all over 20 minus 10. And then we could figure out what that is. And then the last thing, sorry, there's not a lot of room left, would be take the right side of 20. So do the other numbers that are close which would be P of 30 minus P of 20, all over 30 minus 20. And then we figure out what that is. And that would give us the right side of 20. So there are three different ways of coming up with an estimate for this one when it's right on the table. Any of them would work, but you have to show your work of how you're calculating it. Okay, so that's why they'll all often say on an AP exam, they'll say, show your work that leads to your conclusion or show your computations that lead to your conclusion because they're looking for this. They're looking, how did you come up with the answer that you have? All right, that's it for this video. So in this lesson, again, you're just checking rates of change. You're gonna have a lot of different type of word problems with rates of change. You have to find the derivative yourself, but I'd encourage you to use your calculator and then rock that master check. And in the next lesson, we're gonna do some crazy stuff with related rates.